because in terms of experience, I had a great day at the bunker session. You know, it was a lot of fun. The horn section, we got to just kind of like uh, clown around. We're looking nice in our fancy clothes. We got all these cameras on us. You know, it was a cool experience. I haven't done too much uh, stuff like that in the past. Uh, in terms of mixing, I've grown a lot as a mix engineer since I did the the uh, Flux sessions. I think I'm taking a more calculated approach to mixing the bunker sessions. And I think that's reflected in the way that we go about the revision process. I remember there being a lot more mix revisions for the the Flux sessions, you know. Why does it sound like the trumpets in the Grand Canyon with the reverb? <laughs> that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm having an easier time uh, bringing out the character of the music that it wants to wants to take, especially because I've been a lot more involved in the band and in the process. The the songs that we do are so long, and they're so dynamic, and that they have these different parts, and you really have to. Uh, it's such a good opportunity to get into a mixing flow. When you're mixing so many songs, you have to keep a, an air of consistency throughout, and. You also tend to have different goals, though, with each of the tracks. You know, you try and bring out what that track is saying. There's always something new to learn, I think. And uh, I find that listening to people who are well-established in this industry, they're always trying to break out of their own habits. Never do the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> this, you know, you can see it all on the screen. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> I hope you edit this shit, man. I, I hope, yeah, yeah. Of course I do. You think people want to see and hear every single stupid thing we do? Uh, of course I don't know about you, but maybe. Ah, <laughs> oh, goddamn. <laughs> Dallas. So I, I wanna I wanna I wanna hear the horns like more you know what I mean like more full sound full and warmer like ba 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 da ba da ba ba right what can I say I mean mixing is is a, it's a subtle art form and I think that's why a lot of people underestimate what's going on and you know I'll say before I got into it. You listen to all these classic songs that you love, and you just hear the song, you know? That's it. You hear the song. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's beautiful. And then when you've done this for a while and you start listening and you realize, wow, that's some crazy reverb he has on his vocals right there. Oh, I'll listen to that delay on the, on the snare. It's like going. But people don't really think about that when they're not in this field, and they shouldn't. And that's kind of why mixing takes so long, because you have the power to, to sculpt in like really profound and impactful ways. And you have to do just enough that it sounds really good, but that people aren't focused on what you've done. You're just highlighting what was already there in terms of music. So it takes a while. You could go in there and throw all, everything on 11 and you get something that sounds absolutely, you know, crazy and maybe doesn't serve the music and everybody will hear, wow, the mix engineer did so much there. But it doesn't mean they're ever going to listen to it again. <laughs> you have to really be open and sensitive to what you're working on. Like each project is different. You have to get familiar with all these tools and then you have to learn when is it when is the right time to employ something? You want to be you want to be invisible. Yeah. We're not necessarily we, we don't say invisible. We say kind of transparent because you're you're leaving a mark there and you're yeah. changing something, but you don't want people to necessarily notice it so much. You just want it to be there and for it to complement the overall picture. <laughs> What are you doing with this doll, Jose? 
Nothing. Nothing? No. Are you sure? Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs>